All right, in this video, we're going to learn about edge computing for the web. We're going to use a Fastly Compute service to change the behavior of a glitch website at the edge. We're going to create a serverless app that runs on the Fastly network and sits between the user and the website. Before we do that, we're going to see how you can deploy an entire website to the edge in just a few clicks. Make sure you've signed up for a free Fastly developer account if you haven't already. Once you're logged into your Fastly control panel, you can go ahead and create a new service. And you're going to choose Compute. And we're just going to use a starter kit. We'll accept all the default options, which include a domain we can use to test our app. And we're going to choose the default JavaScript starter kit. You can go ahead and deploy it. So this starter kit is a simple generated static site. It's got some JavaScript in it, it's got some HTML in it, and Fastly is building it into WebAssembly so that it can run fast and safely at the network edge close to your website users. So this might take a couple of minutes to complete, but once it's successfully deployed, you can go ahead and open it. And there we go. It's a simple site. It's served completely from the edge. And you can do that with a generated static site and not even have to think about hosting it. Now, if we wanted to continue developing this app, we would pull it from Fastly down into our local environment. But we're going to do something different. We're going to find out what a compute service can do when we put it in front of an existing website. And we're going to do that in Glitch. So we don't even have to download or install anything locally. We can try the whole thing in the browser. So this is our demo website. This is the origin version of it on Glitch. We take a look at the deployed version, which is at an edgecompute.app address on the Fastly network. We can see that it's changing the site. It's added some location information into the page and it's changed the style. So we're going to remix this Glitch website. You will find it at learn-edge-computing.glitch.me. Once you've got it open, go ahead and remix it. And that is going to give you a copy of the project and it's going to open it in the Glitch editor. First thing you want to do is make sure you have this preview pane open on the right. If you're not seeing it, you can use the preview button along the bottom. And that's going to give you a live update of your site and it's going to be at a unique glitch.me address. In the middle, we've got the README. It has all of the steps that we're going to go through in it. And on the left, we've got the project files. So the HTML for the site is in index.html. We've got some assets in the public folder. We've got the main style sheet. We've also got a different style sheet that we use from the edge. And our compute code is in the edge folder. So the main file in here that we're going to pay attention to is index.js. That's in the source folder. And we're using JavaScript, but you can code compute apps in other languages if you prefer. So we're going to take a closer look at this code later, but it's carrying out those UX changes that happened at the edge. The other file to check out is the Fastly Tomo. The Glitch project wrote this file when you remixed it. And it set it up to tell Fastly to use your website remix as the back end. That's the origin for our new compute service. All right, let's pop back into the README. We've already signed up for an account, but we're going to need an API key so that we can deploy to Fastly from inside Glitch. So if you jump back into your Fastly control panel, you're going to choose account, personal profile, and API tokens. And we're going to create a new token and you might be prompted to authenticate again here. Just go ahead and do that. Give your token a name, any name that makes sense to you. You're going to choose automation and engineer. For scope, we want global and we want it unchecked, the read only one. We're going to do all services and we're going to set it to never expire. You can go ahead and create your token. And in the little pop-up, copy your new token onto your clipboard. And you probably want to keep a copy of it on your computer for later. 
Back in the Glitch project, if you open the .env file, that's the environment editor, we've already got a variable in here for your Fastly API token. You can go ahead and paste the token that you copied from Fastly in as the value. All right, so back in the readme, we're on to the deployment step now. This project has been preloaded with the Fastly CLI and some commands that you can use. You'll find them in the package JSON if you're curious. But you'll see in the readme that we've got a shortcut command that we can use. So you're going to open your project terminal at the bottom of Glitch and you're going to enter the command npm run publish. And at this point, Fastly is going to build the code that you've got inside that edge folder into WebAssembly. That's going to give us an app that can run on the network. So it's going to upload that to a new service and deploy it to the edge. And it's going to set your Glitch project as the origin for that service. And this might take a couple of minutes. Don't worry if it takes a little bit longer to finish. If you hit any errors that you can't get past, take a look in the help file in the Glitch app. Once your service is active, you'll see the address written out to the terminal. It's going to have the same domain as your Glitch site, but it's got edgecompute.app at the end of it instead of glitch.me. So you can go ahead and open it, and it might take a minute to load. If you get a server error, just wait a minute and reload it. Let's open the Glitch site so that we've got it side by side. Back in the editor, if you open the preview in a new window, that will give you the two side by side to compare. And we can see straight away that we've got a complete style change and we've also got this location information written into the page. In our edgecompute.app site, we can find out some more information about what's happening in the network. So if you open your browser dev tools and you open the network tab and reload the site, you scroll up through the requests and pick the one that's just for the edgecompute.app address. We take a scroll through the headers and we're going to find that cookie where we set the location information. And we're also going to find out information about the Fastly hop. Let's take a look at the code that did all of this. So back in your Glitch project, if you go into Edge Source Index.js, we'll take a look at the Fastly code. So we have a function that handles each request that comes in from the user, and it determines the response that we send back to them. So we grab the geolocation information and we write that into a message. We change the style sheet to use the edge.css style sheet. We make the request. We get some extra information from the response from the origin that tells us the fastly pop. And then we add all of that as a cookie and we send it back with the response. All right, let's jump back into the readme because we're going to make a change to the compute code now. You'll see some code in a block here. Just grab it all, copy it, jump back into index.js and scroll down until you find the comment that has a little construction sign emoji in it. On the line after that, go ahead and paste the code in. So what we're going to do is we're going to show a completely different style sheet during one hour of the day at the user location. So we're going to show them some bonus content. And what I would recommend is changing the time in here to match the time of day at your location right now, just so that you can test it. So for me, it's just after 11 o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to change it to between 11 and 12. And I'm going to use the prettier button to tidy it up. I'm going to jump back into the readme. So unlike my glitch site, which automatically updates as I edit it, whenever I make a change to my Fastly compute code, I have to explicitly redeploy it. And that means that I know the current version of my compute app is gonna stay active until I decide to deploy a new version. And it also means that if something goes really badly wrong, I can revert back to the previous version. So we're gonna do the same flow again. We're gonna open up the terminal and we're gonna run npm run publish. And Fastly is going to run through the same steps. It's going to rebuild the project. It's going to upload it onto the service and it's going to change to a new service version. Again, it might take a couple of minutes. Once your service is activated, you can pop back into your edgecompute.app tab 
and reload it. If you don't see the result straight away, just wait a minute and try it again. And hopefully you get the bonus version. And it even has some bonus content in it that we couldn't see before. Back in your Glitch Readme, we'll scroll back down to the bottom. And although we created the Fastly service inside Glitch, we can still access it in our control panel. So we'll jump back into Fastly. We'll go to the home page. And hopefully you're seeing your service there in the list. So you can open it up, select the current version of it, which should be version 2, and you'll see there are settings in there you can access. If you wanted to set up a custom domain for it, you could do that there. Back in the Glitch Readme, at the end of it, you're going to find a load of links that you can try out for further learning. And for inspiration on what you can do in your compute apps, check out the code examples in the Fastly Docs site.